so we have been in we have been in communication this morning and we have been talking about how you can how you've been seeing without your eyes so you have have noticed how many realities are available there to you when you close your eyes and you feel and you come out of the field of uh, the dreams you wake up out of the dream state and then you take that dream state that feeling into this vibrational reality into this waking life and you remember with your eyes closed the feelings from the dream how it felt how you felt how the environment felt the energies the vibrations you keep your eyes closed as you wake up and you remember these vibrations and as you keep your eyes closed and you do not recall and remember from your memory what your apartment looks like who you are, what you do during the day, that is all memory and you leave that asleep, you leave, you do not reach out to that even though it wants to come back in out of habit you do not reach out to that and you keep your eyes closed and you keep the memory of you, you keep connected with what you were connected with the whole time in your dream, with that feeling you bring that into this world and now you are awake in this world and you are connected with the feelings from your dream and what you will then realize is that is that there are so many inside there are so many different realities available and that with this feeling with the sensation the feeling uh, you create and it always exists on the finer more subtle levels first and that is how you create it by feeling it by feeling it you feel it and then the feeling of it will create an image and so the image of you when you are lying in your bed and you have your eyes closed is not going to be out of the memory of what your room looks like when you open your eyes no it is going to be representing the vibrations and the feelings that you have from that you brought with you from the dream world that inspired you because there you were holding them for a while you were you were there for a while um, as you were as your body was asleep and so now you're bringing them into the waking state and then as you lie there with your eyes closed you can actually feel the different potentials um, you can feel the field of potentials you can feel that there are different realities overlapping overlaying they're already there it feels different you your imagination will then translate those vibrations and those feelings it will translate them into images and so you're lying there in bed and the sounds are different the sounds are different um, and the images of what the room the space actually that you are lying in may look like as you are not thinking about it logically like well obviously I'm lying here in my room and my room looks like this and then you are connecting with your memory uh, of of well the last time that you saw your room and the last time that you were entertaining that time space vantage point being in that time space vantage point which is before you went to sleep so now you're entertaining other possibilities and you're feeling them and you're feeling how you are how the dimensions are opening and so you're lying there in bed and 
it's different. It's different. You can imagine, but it's also there. That's the thing. You can feel that as you are feeling them, as you are sensing those energies, those vibrations that are, as your eyes are closed, bringing images to your mind of a space that you're in. And it's not, doesn't have the sharpness of the physical if when you would open up your eyes, but it is an imaginary space, yet you feel it. That is the big difference is the image comes, the imagination comes from your feeling of it, from your, from your holding those vibrations that you had been tapping into and had been dialed into and had been entertaining, but entertaining in the sense of you were there physically, your lighter body was there experiencing yourself in those other spaces, in those other realities, and now you're bringing them into here and they morph again, they morph again. And what it does is it opens up the space where you can feel how you are a part of, you are the key part, you are the valve through which the streams of energies flow into this reality. You are the dialer, you are the um, the, the radio dial that dials itself through the vibration that you hold into the dimension that matches that those exact frequencies and codes that is that exact frequency and that is the representation of that but it begins inside it begins in our feelings that's how we dial ourselves in so you can feel then, first of all, you can feel how you are always constantly in a field of potential. It is an open space of potential that is morphing the whole time with your consciousness, with your perception, with your beliefs that you are, that you are actively holding or inactively holding, but they are there. You are holding them, but you are s simply not aware of them at the moment so you are latently holding them and you can feel how you can bring and create as you feel into realities within you that you bring them here and that doesn't mean that these fantastical realities where it feels like this morning it felt more open there were there was more nature around there was not you were not in a confined small room space it was much more open the sounds were much more ethereal there were potentials slightly dipping in and going out again and just this open space of potential and this open space of already feeling different in the same space, but you were not having that thought, oh, I am in the same space, because you weren't. Energetically, you weren't. It is only if you would have opened your eyes that you would have believed it, that you were in the same space like last night, that in that, that, in that moment, all the connections from the past would have been reconnected and you, you would have been dialed back into that more firm timeline and you would have been back in a more denser reality. But these dense realities are a, a densification of the less dense realities and it's where it comes from. It comes from you. It comes from the, the inside. You are the one that creates it. It comes through you, through your conscious awareness, through your belief as you become conscious. You're the one who dials yourself in.
And so you get a feeling of how you shift your reality, how you change your reality by the vibrations that you are entertaining, that you are consciously feeling. And as your understanding of the reality expands, you understand what imagination is. You open up to more streams of vibrations from, the, from within, from the potential to come through. And as you feel them, and it's easier when you have your eyes closed, it's easier to tap into the intuitive field, into the feminine side of reality, the inside, as you close your eyes. Because we have been, we have come out of balance collectively into the masculine into the being, the uh, feedback loop coming through the eyes, mostly. Into the doing, into being fixed on the physical that we see, feel, touch, believe in the waking state. The feminine has been, and this is what is coming through now, very, very, uh, this is the main message, this is, this is what is coming through, like really opening up and coming through mm, very clear, very strong, is how uh, the coming off balance has been into the plus, into the plus, okay into the outside way of doing things, the, the masculine way of doing things. But don't just fixate this on men and women. It is the principle that is speaking here. It is the principle that we are speaking of here. The principle. And we really want to feel and explain and understand the principle is working through all life. And it is simply, um, well, we'll get to that later, how it expresses itself in, and why we say masculine, feminine. And you can use the term um, outside bound, inside bound, for now. Because we have, every living form has both dynamics these two dynamics are a part of life. They are a part of life. Now, one dynamic has been overly dominant, overly focused on, always on, um, on account of, on account of the other, always the other is lacking, has to lack, when one is is over dominant so as we have been fixed on the outside and sort of locked into a feedback loop that didn't delve back in like the eight like the figure eight in infinity it delves back into the feminine to the inside and then the wave comes into the outside and experiences that which has been in, intuited, experiences those energies that have been connected with from the inside and they spill onto the outside into the physical and they, they are then experienced in the physical. But the feedback loop is only whole when it goes when it gets fed from the inside, fed from the outside, and then the outside feeds the inside, and the inside feeds the outside. And the way that it has been is that the outside feeds the outside, and the inside 
we lose sight, we lose touch, we have lost touch with it. And that's the creative part, that's the potential, that's, that's where it opens up into infinity in the, on the inside. It is only the outside that seems to be limited, and the outside is only limited uh, by the density, by the time-space, and by our beliefs. Uh, it simply is slower, it morphs slower. There is a time lag in that place of the eight in the middle, there is a time lag. And the more we are in, in, a, in a lower density, in a more, more denser version uh, of reality dialed in, our physical reality as what we call our waking life, the more there is that time lag, because that is our protection. And we'll get to that later. So, what you could experience this morning, what you opened up to and became aware of this morning, is how these streams are always there. And it is how much we can imagine them, how much we can allow them, how much we actually can open up to our feminine, if you so will, to our inside. Okay, so let's leave the word feminine because then again we have this, we see a female body, we see a male body. and. And it creates a, a, a distortion because we don't have the language for it yet. It is, it is only coming. We don't have the right understanding for it yet. And so that we don't fall into an askew understanding of it, we will simply use the term inside instead of feminine. What was very clear also to you this morning is how good it felt. How the reality in its amorph form, in its more ethereal form, however that you could sense and that you could imagine, um, was felt so good. It felt so good. And as you are <clears throat> as you are entertaining feeling and then holding these energy streams, they are a part of your energy they, they then are a part of your symphony, a part of your energy stream. And to the degree that you can hold them to the degree that you allow them, to the degree that you are aware of them, of those potentials, and that it is up to you if you want to hold them, entertain them, feel them, imagine them, and how much you want to do that. And the understanding of reality, if, you, if it can if it in your belief system has a place to if you if there is no resistance to it or distortion field offered to it in your belief system because your belief system can hold this understanding because you are understanding and so you can hold it you understand enough of how reality works to know how it gets created through us and how then we experience in the outside through a time lag our own creation 
And of course, when we say our own creation, there is also the collective, that we, we hold collective strands in our, in our energy stream. It is like, they're all, they're all light streams. They're, they're, it is light weaving into a body, just like DNA weaves. We hold the collective strands, all the way down to individual strands, and they all weave together. <clears throat> they flow together like water, like water comes together. There are greater streams and smaller streams, more intricate melodies and then bass lines. If you, the symphony is a very good way of describing it, what comes together as a symphony. Every little bit has a part of it, like the little triangle has a part of it, the drum has a part of it, the strings there's always several strings, even though sometimes there's one string that will pick up on, a, on an individual melody as the other strings all, many of them play the same melody. And yet, as they play also those that play the same melody and play the same instrument, again, when you zoom into it, there is never one violin that sounds the same. Because also every violin is made of a different wood and even if it were made of the same tree and even if it were made by the same hands it is not made ever at the same time so there is always going to be individuality every player has a different heartbeat All of that comes into play, all of the little parts, and it goes all the way down to each, 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 each particle that comes together to make the whole, which is unique. Every, every single particle is unique. So if you have an understanding, and this is why understanding is so key to this that the mind can hold it that the mind can hold in a sense that the mind can open up to this reality the way reality gets created when it understands it it can hold it it can open up to it it will not just simply have no way to um, yes no no way to hold this potential and if it has no way to hold as reality gets created the inner the inner intuitive if it has no understanding then it has no value for it. It cannot have value. It has no value for it. And if we, if we do not value and open up to the inside of the infinity loop, to the, to the part of creation, which is, which is the potential, which is on the inside and where everything comes from on the outside. But if we stay only in the outside, creation and only value that so to speak the the male principle <clears throat> we only value the physical uh, tangible this density that uh, that we have dialed ourselves into we are blind to half of we're just speaking in very coarse terms now we are blind to half of the other half of creation, the creational um, reality. 
We're, we are blind to the other half of reality. And what that does is that we feel, we become in this, in this constant feedback loop of, of only acknowledging the physical part of it and thereby in a way we yes we we keep ourselves locked in and we feel stuck we that's that's how we feel stuck in in a rut we feel uninspired we don't know how to break out of it and what it makes us feel like is um disempowered and we feel more it it is a play it is it is a, a way to more um recreate and be at home and and feel as victims like we have no power to create our lives we have we are the victims of our circumstances and we we cannot we do not see how we can change things and that makes us feel uh, well, that brings our vibration down. It, um, of course, it is also that we are not in conscious connection with our soul. We feel uninspired and life becomes dull and life becomes just not fun and uh, not inspired and um, it, it becomes a drudgery, really, a, a drudgery. And we feel like simply we must function and for for what for who are we functioning actually isn't this my life you know so why am i doing all these things that i uh, wouldn't do if you know if, if if i could snap my hands and just simply uh do whatever i wanted to do and everything will be taken care of my needs would be taken care of and i could just do whatever i wanted to do as if i was in a dream then i would certainly not be doing what i find myself doing and so what i find what i find myself doing i find myself doing it out of a sense of i have to do it I have to do it. I have no choice. I do not see another way. This is just surviving. This is surviving. And it it saps our energy, it saps our joy. It is it is ma makes us feel like we are simply functioning to stay alive. But then is that really living? And certainly it's not the life that we would wish for. And the wishes and hopes that we have, they're also within, very confined within that mind frame, within that mindset then of what we believe is possible. And of course, without the seeing of the whole, how reality truly gets created. I mean, without the uh, inside aspect of it, that we are turning our backs to, that we are not aware of, that we are closed down to. Um, it limits, it limits us and we feel stuck and we feel like in a, in a tight box, we feel imprisoned. And that is why the understanding helps of how reality is what it is made of how it functions how it works so science and um the quantum physics and the physics and the science that is truly looking from an open mind that is not uh based on an agenda to keep things the way that we have been doing them, to keep things within a framework, to make them fit into the framework that is already there. The science, so the, the curious minds that are researching matter, 
from a truly curious open space so open to okay let's see what we see and let's see how it works and let's see how it fits in with everything else and when there is an open mind things can then come together in ways where the dots connect where equations equate And the hunger to understand from an open mind will open up this space to what we have been closed off to. And we will rediscover the value of the unseen. We will rediscover the value of feeling. We will rediscover the value of our dreams, of our dream time. And with that also, we will rediscover capacities that have been going to sleep in our bodies, in our physical systems our bodies, our, our systems, at a range of density that goes all the way back to pure light and all the way down into this physicality. And so another thing that will happen is that capacities such as our pineal glands, these capacities will begin to awaken again. And we will be able to see with the inner eye. It is not an it is completely the same anatomy as an eye. And this anatomy will rebuild as we rediscover the value of the inside, actually as we discover reality as it is, the part of reality that has been shunned off, that, that we have simply forgotten And we have completely left out of our focus. So as we discover the value of it, and that it is the essential part of shifting into, from being, so to speak, a victim of your own creation, not aware that you are the instrument through which the light is coming through you and into your reality how you experience it so you are the creator of your experience without knowing it and then of course you are not the creator then you are the victim of your own experience that is your experience to that degree that you are not aware And as you widen your focus and include the inside reality, the unseen reality, the reality of intuition, feeling, thoughts, sensations, you include all of it. You expand your awareness to include this that is always going on. 
in your perception in in your in your experience except your focus is not on it at all your focus is and then you can see okay where is always my focus where is my focus um focused on or or stuck or dialed into um what do i pay my attention to my greatest currency is my attention what do i pay it to where do i plug in and remain what is it that i regurgitate what is it that i constantly constantly recreate how do i manage my attention and as i open up my focus to include the inside to include my thoughts my feelings my intuition and then also my dreams my dream life and my imagination and what comes through in the in the images in my imagination as i open to this reality that is always there that i simply have not paid attention to it will become more and more available to me it will become more and more available to me and this is the beginning of the awakening to the recognition of how reality gets created through me and there will be a threshold where i sense that i have a choice I will come to that threshold where I sense that I have a choice. And the choice will then naturally veer toward that which feels better. That which I prefer. And then and then you will notice that when desires come through they don't come through as a need anymore because there is not the fear of oh well what if it doesn't happen because it doesn't come anymore from a sense of lacking it from a sense of lack it comes through as a possibility as a possibility that oh wouldn't that be nice and oh well, let's see is that something Let's see how strong that desire is. It came into my field. Oh, yeah, that would be nice. And then let's see if it's something that sticks, you know, that, that is strong enough. And I know that it only comes into my field because it is something that comes from the inside as an inspiration. And so it is something, it is a possibility that I can take. It is a possibility and if that possibility sticks around and if I if I sense oh that is in my highest good that is something that is very powerful and if it then if it really becomes a desire I know it's there because it wants to happen because it would bring forth a reality that that would include that would make positive waves that it is always about the highest good of all the more that we open up to our inside selves to our inside reality to our soul it is always more and more and ever more about the highest good of all it includes more and more because as we go deeper and deeper into the soul we widen in scope we widen in our um, we, we, we expand into our light bodies, into our ever, ever finer, higher densities. And the more higher we go in density, in vibration, the more we expand in our light bodies, the more we are connected on the horizontal with, our, with the web of life, with our light family, with our connections. And, and also with our higher self which is in the um vertical which is in the in the vertical um 
column of light, the vertical stream, light stream. And so we have the vertical and we have the horizontal. And then it keeps going into all directions until the sphere is completely covered. Every pixel of it is covered with a ray, so to speak, with a light stream going into covering every single angle coming from the mid point, from the mid light point. And so when we open up to this inside reality, which is finding in it, its expression through us, we are those valves, we are those ventiles, we are those instruments through which the sound makes its way into the density and finds manifestation. So all that is on the inside is represented on the outside. However, we are that threshold. We are that tran transistor. We are what it has to go through. And so depending on how we bend the light and depending on how much distortion we have within ourselves, it will be manifested in that way on in the in our physical so as we open up ever ever deeper ever more ever wider to the inside to our soul to who we truly are. This is the life, this is the, 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 the life where it is alive, where it is aware of itself. The unmanifest, if you will, if you will, at least unmanifest in the tip of creation in this density that for our experience is the tip of creation. We include more and more and more light streams that we share. We come more and more into the sharing field with the others, with the other light bodies, quantums. with the other aspects of the one light we are all aspects of light unique aspects of light unique bodies of light and so what will then flow through us as we are connected and aware of will be ever more taking that into account will be ever more for the greatest good greatest good greatest good so I know then that when something shows up that I desire depending on how much I desire it and depending on how it sticks around, it is wanting to become manifest because it is not just for me the highest version of, of joy that I can imagine, but for so many others involved, so many others involved. And here's the thing. What is good for me, what comes from the alignment, what comes from the inside, from the intuition, what comes from the soul. But the soul aspect that of, of me that is remembering of itself, that is 
coming from the consciousness that we call unity consciousness, that is aware that it is an aspect of light, that is aware that is it is not separate from light, and not separate from life, and not separate from the web of life, and from the web of light, and not separate from love. Whatever comes from there is in the highest good of all. And even if whatever gets created, I, I didn't want to go into this, but I will just mention this. Whatever gets created from the ego that appears to be not for the highest good of all. So let's say destruction and suffering. At the level of the absolute, it has its purpose. Everything has its perfection and purpose. So that just needs to be mentioned as well. Because all the distortions that are created through the forgetting of self through the illusion of being separate from the light from love from the love that we are from the love of God all the distortions all the suffering all the destruction that is manifest and experienced Let's just take that in for a second. Is as far as creation wishes to go into density. From where, from that point, from that farthest point into density that is carved out through suffering, that is experienced through suffering and that thereby made its way into contraction into density into pain that is how far from that point creation the light of God the one consciousness wishes to take that path back of awakening back up to itself so we will not go further on that tangent. We will come back to where we started. So as we have come out of balance into collectively being caught in the outside loop of recreating the same, the same, the same reality um, within a small box of possibilities where we feel that we are in a survival mode, in a functioning mode, not in magic. We are not in magic. We are not in play enjoy and we are not in conscious creation in order to come back to that middle point now imagine the infinity symbol this eight the middle point so that the the two spheres if you wish the two spheres the outside inside come into balance when they are in perfect balance then the wave and balance is not a still point where it's 
it's like at a 90 degrees angle from the horizontal line. Balance is that there is a rhythm of going back and forth. It is a wave. The wave. That's what balance is, is this movement of a wave of back and forth. They are now holding hands and working in unison. And actually they're always holding hands. They are one. However, when there is in that middle point the distortion field of the egoic mind experiencing itself being separate and there is fear because of it, this creates a distortion. And then if that distortion is, is uh, keeping us locked into only one side, it is completely out of balance. And we create our reality from that place. Then, in order to get back into a rhythm, depending on how long we have been so focused only on the outside, it will need almost... Yes, it will need uh, the, the same impact that we have paid attention to, to that degree that we have paid attention to and been locked in on the outside. It will need to come back to the inside to that same degree. So for a while it may seem that we are out of balance by uh, standards, by, by our um, habitual standards from the, the, the collective system of understanding, of doing, 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 of, of entertaining only the outside part of reality, the masculine principle of reality. So it may be that we will come for, for um, it will look like we are out of balance because we retrieve so much to the inside in order to regroup, in order to uh, re Remember, it will take that much more. That's the way we come into this rhythm. That's the way we come into balance. We can't immediately come into balance. The way is that, that to that degree that we have been out of balance on this side, we bring our attention back to the other side, which is the inside in this case. And so it may seem like we are completely out of balance as we have retrieved out of the doing system, out of the doing part of life. It may seem like we are um, pulling our tails in and crawling into a dark cave and plugging out of society like a sick animal. Well, in a sense, we are sick, and if, if you so will, because we have so come so out of balance. And the suffering has become overwhelming. So for many of us, this is what it looks like. And for many of us, it actually will play itself out and look like, uh, it will play itself out in um, in some form of physical shutdown so come come into play by uh, it looks like an illness that will confine us to the inside that will confine us to our beds to our to our rooms and and f for many of us it will also be that it will look like depression depression when we're going inside we're going underground so to speak and also when we feel this way like sick animals they they will not in, be in interaction they will crawl away from their group and be alone that's the only time that an animal is going to want to be alone is when they're really really sick and what um so what it'll, it'll look like is is that you know, if, if we feel depressed, we don't want to be with anyone. It feels terrible because we're, we feel like a black hole and it's just, we can't have anyone else, uh, no one else can pull us out of it. No one else can cheer us up and we don't, we can feel how we're affecting negatively the others. And so all of this that looks like an illness and looks like depression or that something bad happening to us 
is a part of this coming back to the inside of coming back into balance and so it may even look like we are we are um, we're struggling with an illness and sickness and and we may even believe that and we may even suffer from from that for a long time for a long time until we can see the full picture and the purpose of it the purpose of the pain is to draw us inside it is screaming for our attention that is the purpose of pain screaming for our attention where we have come so far away from ourselves where the distortion field has been so thick that we cannot hear our own symphony anymore we cannot we don't have access to our intuition anymore we don't have access to the inner part of ourselves anymore to our soul that information is literally undermined it is blocked and that's it manifests in the body for example that's how it manifests in the body as a, as a, as a stiffness as a contraction the blood can't flow information can't flow the 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 uh, for example, the meridians, the energy through the meridians isn't flowing right. And so then the system is not communicating well and cannot experience itself as a whole because there is a part of it that is not that is disconnected. And so since it is not connected to the whole, it can't function right. And that's when illness and off balance and illness begins to manifest and the pain is 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 all the parts of your body that feels disconnected is not functioning right is coming off balance and the whole is weighing on it and it is screaming for help and the kind of help it needs is attention first of all it needs our attention and then we can understand what is going on and then we will give it a, an attention from a whole other point of view from a broadened perspective when we understand the source of our pain the source of our suffering giving it medicine is the first stages of reconnection now the the least conscious state of reconnection is when we give it the kind of medicine that numbs the pain although we are paying attention It is a negative attention. It is saying, oh, I, I can't hear you. However, at the same time, when it gets so bad, we can't handle the pain. At the same time, it is a stress for the whole body. So we need, sometimes we need these painkillers. But at the same time, we should still reconnect with it as soon as we can handle the level of pain. We should still listen to the call and make that reconnection into that area of pain. And sit with it and be with it and allow the process.
then later we will come to it with gifts of soothing that are not numbing, that are working together with the natural system. Those are different kinds of medicines. Those are medicines that work with the body, that are not just simply shutting it down and telling it what to do and manipulating it in ways so that we mustn't hear what it is telling us. So it depends on how much we are coming from our distortion field or how, how much we are waking up to our distortion field, to the separate, uh, to the separate consciousness mind, to the mind that believes in separation, which only happens in consciousness. Of course, consciousness is never separate. It happens in the belief system. And then it becomes an experience. Then it gets manifested. But on the inside, it is never a reality. And that is part of who we are. That is who we truly are, is our soul. Because even when the physical, when even when we retrieve from this very physical, dense reality, which we would call the death of the body. We are, we, we are, we are the soul again that we were the whole time. We wake up to it again, we remember. So as this distortion field clears up, at some point we don't even need any kind of physical medicine anymore and simply the the medicine is our pure our attention our understanding our our focus our um, paying attention to it our listening our consciousness and we come to the place where we heal by consciousness alone this is an absolute reality However, first, when we wake up to that degree, to this reality, to ourselves, and to the understanding of how reality works and who we are, 